really pretty crazy. Um, went from being at the uh, the lowest in three years on the on the FTSE 100, for example, to um, to seeing one of the best two gate gains in um, in a number of years. <clears throat> And uh, likewise with all prices, down at 13-year lows, rebounded back with almost 10% gain over, the couple, over a couple of days. So um, some, some big price moves going on, and obviously that's great for trading. And uh, we're going to obviously have a look at um, what this week could bring and some of the main important factors for some of the more popular products that we trade at CMC Markets. <coughs> so we could as you can see on my screen here, I just things have divided up by uh, sort of major asset classes and CFX commodities. So we're going to get into the, some of those. Uh, if you had any particular questions on um, something I'm not covering by default, then just feel free to let me know. So I'm just going to kick off with, um, you know, to kind of work my way down here for U.S. equities. So here we've got the U.S. 30. We scale out a bit here. This is something I'm sure you're all quite familiar with. Really big level here. Um, that we're um, we're currently currently bouncing off. It's that low that started off in uh, February of 2014, so almost exactly a year ago. <coughs> um, sorry, two years ago, of course. Um, and we we came into it again in August, rebounded sharply, didn't quite make it to the highs, and now we're back here again. But if you look at this weekly candle that we experienced last week, that's quite a dramatic reversal. Uh, finished higher for the week when it was looking like we would be heading to these multi-year blows below that low form, as I mentioned a couple of years ago. It's a huge level, and to some extent understandable that we're seeing a bounce here. Also corresponds with this 200-week SMA. Ends up on a lot of people's charts, but not necessarily as significant as the 200-day. So here's the kind of configuration that we find ourselves in. Still very much a lower low being formed according to the weekly chart, and still that was the, the latest lower high form. So still in a downtrend, but we've got to be aware of this long-term support. And that was pretty much what I was saying at last week's webinar is that we're downtrending, but we're heading into this big support. Um, you know, there was a big support level here. We saw we saw a little rebound, but it gave up the gains almost straight away, and we went down to the, the next support, or almost down to the next support, and have rebounded since. So I'd say the next, uh, you know, we see, we see RSI coming off this oversold level. You know, we're getting a strong bounce within a um, bearish trend at the moment. You know, and that's that's the way it always tends to work, is that some of the biggest up days that you see are in a bear market because it's people who are short the market panic, kind of covering those those short trades. So the next logical one would just be where we got that sharp rebound from the initial, you know, if I if I draw in that support, can make a bit more sense of this. We got the bounce off there, but it all ended on that same day, and we ended up going pushing lower. So that will be logically the next source of resistance if we can push that higher, that much higher. And I think I think we should be able to before re-examining these lows. And then logically, the next one beyond that would just be the next uh, next daily high. There aren't any really serious swing low points to consider here. Here, um, I would say, you know, it's not such a strong reversal point as as this this level up here. W worth paying attention to the RSI though, because we did um, find a lot of support at the 40 level while we we're in this range, and then we dived down as the trend broke. So back up to 40 was support, could become resistance again. So be mindful of a, perhaps a price level in around this 16282 and a 40 level on the RSI. Or obviously look at your own technical indicator for some sort of equivalent, um, equivalent levels there. Fundamentally, what are the drivers here? Well, um, as always, it's um, probably going to be China and oil prices. China um, was a bit quieter last week in that uh, the, the currency has basically not really moved since that first um, uh, crazy week in which um, there were some dramatic devaluations of the currency. Um, the currency has basically stabilized since. I think the, the People's Bank of China realized they were causing panic in markets. So that, to some extent, has um, lessened the concern over China. And obviously, we saw those that bit of data last week, which, um, although slightly disappointing, was not too worrisome. 
So China's slightly on the back burner. Oil price is certainly well up there in terms of the consideration. We'll, we'll cover the chart on oil a bit at the moment. And I think largely what we are seeing at the moment is a sort of um, a technical rebound from a very bearish market with um, a few sentiment indicators that go a bit extreme. <laughs> The other thing for U.S. markets will be that um, we've got some pretty prominent earnings from some of the high flyers, Apple being a big one, but also Amazon and Facebook. Kind of need those those leaders doing well again uh, to take U.S. markets higher. If, if Apple continues to underperform, it's, it's hard to see the, the biggest stock in America underperforming and the broader indices doing that well. Obviously... You look at, look at the S&P 500, there's 499 other companies there to carry the index higher, but um, sentiment towards Apple does spread across the rest of the index. Let's have a look at the um, UK 100, our proxy for the, the FTSE 100. This is the uh, longer-term monthly chart, and again, a big level here you can see that we ran into and rebounded from, just like US markets did. Looking like we're going to be down on the month for January, pretty hard to see us ending in a month higher at this point, but nonetheless, you can see that we um, saw a nice reversal on the weekly chart here, right off that, um, we did, we sneaked below it, I think, slightly, but pretty much, I don't want these boxes here, I'm just going to get rid of that, soybeans, okay. <clears throat> Right off that 5,600 level, really, and we're getting a nice rebound from there. Still structurally in a downtrend, according to uh, the weekly chart. You know, um, we could stretch that down to here. Not had this confirmed as a lower low yet. Can, can just kind of leave that to remind us of the weekly bias. We're below that 200-day moving average. So still these kind of um, reasons for caution over selling over, over over buying too heavily because the overall structure on the longer term is still to the downside, but we've seen a big rebound off this um, this long term support and good grounds to believe that we could push a bit higher from here. If we drop down to the daily chart. This was kind of um, support broken, turned resistance, and I think that could act as some resistance again on the way up, but I suspect that we can actually push maybe into this declining trend line up above the 6100 level if this, if this push higher can continue. We've got that was fairly substantial swing low, so maybe in that 6050 area we could encounter a little bit of pullback, um, but I think, you know, the, the I think the nature of the environment is here is that we're in this kind of structural downtrend, but we're probably about to begin a bit of a kind of stronger correction higher. So the choice is it's really down to your own risk tolerance. Do you, you know, do you trade expecting a, um, a bounce within a downtrend, or do you just stand back and wait and look for an opportunity higher up for an opportunity to sell again if the structure still looks bearish? Um, I mean, that's my take on it. Um, for what it's worth, of course, and uh, you know, you may be of a different opinion that it's about to imminently break down, and there aren't going to be, there isn't going to be a big push high. But to me, it looks like there's going to be a bit of a push, especially if we get through this 6,000 level again on the um, on the UK 100. What are the drivers? There are some sales reports um, for you know some kind of Christmas sales reports, but I think that will probably be more of a sort of um, decider on which sectors uh, outperform. It's largely going to be driven by the by the miners and by all companies again, you know, China and commodities have been the biggest reason for this pullback in the FTSE. And uh, fundamentally, I think you've got to look for those drivers still. Now, the big event of the week, particularly for the currency markets, is the, the Fed meeting. Uh, well, actually, one chart I'll just mention. I um, don't know if you follow it on Twitter, um, but this is something I tweeted. I think I may have put it in the chart forum as well. But if I just put, let's see, maybe I can find it in the chart forum. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. U.S. dollar index. So this is just the, um, obviously it doesn't, um, it's not a continuation chart, doesn't go back past the, past the uh, much past the beginning of the, um, the futures contract start beginning date. 
in terms of when we first started trading it. But you can see that this was um, a big level that we pulled down from, got a big reversal there, did push higher on Friday after that big sell-off on Thursday. But I suspect this could be tricky to get back down from. This is sort of 99, 89, it says here, 99, 90, basically that 100 level, maybe a little bounce up to 100 flush out some of these, uh, some of the people short after this, down at the lower levels. It'll push high into 100 and roll over again, it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw a big rejection up here above 100, pushed down, we've managed to get back up, and then we're getting rejected again. A lot of overhead supply at 100. If we do competently get above it, it's a game changer, and it looks like the dollar's pushing higher. But we've got this Fed meeting this week, so whether this 100 level holds is probably going to depend on the Fed and whether they signal that what they've signaled to date is still what they believe. So they've basically signaled to date that they believe in about four rate rises this year. Um, if because of the turmoil in markets, a stronger dollar and the weaker oil price affects their inflation forecast, they're going to uh, maybe hint that um, it's not going to be four this year, maybe more in line with the market consensus, which is more like two. Two rate hikes this year is what the market kind of prices in. Uh, looking at Fed funds futures at a different market, so <clears throat> this will be the that will be the biggest deciding factor to my mind as to whether this uh, this level holds. But to me, at the moment, looking like the U.S. dollar could roll over, and that does kind of fit in with the picture for the euro. I think the euro is looking fairly resilient, especially when you bear in mind that last week the ECB signalled. <coughs> that they want to uh, expand their monetary stimulus in the, at their March meeting. Well, they didn't say they would, but it was pretty similar language to the October meeting when they hinted they would do something in December. And uh, and they did do something. They did something fairly underwhelming. As you remember, that, probably, uh, that, that was the cause for this massive 300 pip rally. But we've been consolidating since. And this was the day of the ECB announcement on Thursday. We pretty much just we dropped down, came off the bottom of the range, and just came right back into the middle again. We dropped again on Friday, um, which obviously is in line with that um, dollar rally, the euro dropped. But we're still basically in this 108 to 110 range. Now, maybe there's room for a little test of the, um, the 107 level again. But we need to get below that 107 to really kind of um, tell us that actually this um, euro bull move is over and that we're trending back down again in the euro. And that 107 in the euro to me is probably going to be in and around. And 107 to 106 perhaps is about the same as the 100 in the dollar index in terms of significance. At the moment, it looks like we could actually perhaps push higher out of this range. That would be a push higher, consolidation, and break to the top side. That's against the current trend. We're below the moving average. Um, the weekly chart kind of tells us we're trending down. Um, but it, the euro has been pretty resilient in the face of quite bearish news, which is that you know more printing of euros, which should devalue each euro. Looking at the British pound, obviously it's been an absolute stinker recently. But quite a strong rebound last week. So look at the week, weekly chart. Uh, I think you even need to look at the monthly chart to get the significance of this level. Right down at these uh, 2010 lows, we got through it. So it actually means we're at the lowest since 2009. But we've we've closed up back above the level, and um, you know that's 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 textbook um, uh, hammer reversal. So that's that's, that's a um, that's a bullish reversal pattern at the moment. Um, the confirmation of the pattern would come on a break above this resistance I've signaled here, which is basically um, the top of the previous week, the high of the previous week. Is it the high or is it the uh, the open? No, let me just confirm what I'm actually saying. Yeah, so the high of last week, a close through there this week would be more of a confirmation of the pattern. Down here, you're going to get better value but the pattern is more likely to fail. Above here, less likely that the pattern will fail, but obviously you're buying higher in the market. Um, so the daily chart almost belies the strength of this, this rebound in the pound. Nonetheless, 
very much a uh, sharply declining market still. Um, all the trending indicators are still pointing down. It's just a bit like equities, where we're in a big bearish market, even more so with the pound um, than, than the uh, U.S. stocks. But we're getting a rebound off this strong weekly level. Um, so the question mark now is, um, do you buy off the long-term level against the trend, or do you wait for more confirmation that the trend pushes higher, or just assume that the, um, the trend is going to resume, we're eventually going to break down through 141, you know, and wait for that um, break of the level um, to get back in on the trend. <clears throat> These are all decisions for, uh, you know, according to your trading strategy, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think above 143.55, we'll probably back up to this 145.70 mark, which doesn't make much sense on the daily chart, but on the weekly, you can see that it's um, this 2015 low. Will probably, to my mind, be the next logical step should we break above last week's high. Uh, Drivers-wise, uh, the main sort of UK data is the GDP is out on Thursday. <coughs> so. Uh, probably more influential will be the FOMC meeting we've already talked about, but um, um, few, few indicators showing the UK economy slowed recently, but I think that's part and p part of why we've seen such a downdraft in uh, the pound. So I think it's probably largely priced in. So if anything, if we get a positive surprise on the GDP data, that would probably just add to the potential upside here. I don't think um, <clears throat> worse than expected GDP from the UK um, is going to influence the situation much. It may add to the downside if we hear uh, bullish rhetoric from the Fed. Bullish, uh, sorry, hawkish rhetoric from the Fed. <clears throat> We obviously generally mean strong dollar, weak pound. <laughs> now, don't always cover the yen, but it's a big currency level here. It's come off a strong level, <clears throat> and the reason we're seeing, you know, we're seeing some dollar strength here. Um, you know, that kind of fits in line with uh, pushing back into that 100 level on dollar index. The yen is a safe haven currency, and we've stabilized in equities a bit. Uh, but also, there's an off chance that this week, Thursday evening slash Friday morning, we're going to hear more stimulus announced from the Bank of Japan. Um, it's hard to see the dollar yen pushing much lower if we do hear more policy stimulus announced. But the Bank of Japan could make a bit of a mistake, like the uh, <coughs> European Central Bank did and underwhelm with how much extra stimulus they add, and that potentially could cause a further weakening of dollar yen. So we need to look at, A, do they add any stimulus, and B, is it enough? <laughs> now, as I mentioned, still one of the biggest, uh, most significant markets out there at the moment is crude oil. Uh, zoomed in down to a... Um, four-hour chart here. So this is the, the rebound that we've had off the lows. Worth noting, I think, that uh, this, I mean, this is similar for the front month futures contract as well, um, that the 50% retracement is almost perfectly on the $30 round number. So a confluence of support there, and just above it is this previous swing high from the, the 19th of January. So this kind of area offering some potential support Although we have already got a bit of a rebound from the 38% um, retracement, so a few people getting in early. Uh, if we do dip down further, this this could be an interesting area. If we do get below 30 again, I think you know, a lot of bets are going to get called off in terms of this being a sustainable rebound, and we could push into the lows again. So to my mind, 30, a bit of a pivot area in, uh, in Brent. And uh, you can see a pretty sort of equivalent kind of setup, just the slightly different prices in WTI. Here's the strong daily rebound, you know, a, an engulfing pattern here, follow through. And we basically found resistance at these <coughs> these series of highs here, this low, and then these series of highs just below the 32 level is what we're getting a pullback from at the moment. So that's a, it's a decent area of resistance, so it's natural that we get a pullback from here. Um, so it's just a matter of how long does that pullback have, last, and you know, actually, is it even a pullback, or do we we're just dropping down right to the low again? 
here's um, you know here's the the weekly chart, and it's um, you know from pushing into the 12 year lows, we're now back up, um, and we closed last week higher. So may cause a few um, oil shorts at these low levels to think twice about going short again this week. So room for a bit more recovery, I think. But obviously keep in mind that the uh, trend is still very much to the downside. Just last one on gold. So this was, uh, you know, I probably need to remove that now, but this was my highlighted area of possible confluence of um, support here. So going to have this trend line up through here somewhere or other. This is the supporting price at the moment. The resistance is at the uh, 1,110. So we're consolidating beneath that resistance. Gold is also very sensitive uh, to, <coughs> excuse me, to movements in the dollar. And uh, so again, gold is is kind of awaiting this Fed meeting. Um, uh, it's, it's, so it's gold is. Um, you know, less rate hikes from the Fed being symbolized uh, should weaken the dollar and strengthen gold. But if equities move substantially um, to one way or the other, that's going to affect gold prices. I mean, gold is a, a safe haven, so if equities rally from here, from these supports we were looking at, gold is probably heading back down uh, beneath 1,180 again. Oh, sorry, 1,080 again. So... Um, I think that's probably the bigger driver of gold at the moment is that that, that haven flow rather than inflation expectations. So, um, you know, if equities rally, gold will be heading lower from here. Um, likewise, if uh, maybe if equities go nowhere um, or if equities drop off again, then that could be the catalyst we need for um, gold to push below the uh, 1,110, which has been that resistance so far. And then, you know, given that the significance of this resistance, and it's also kind of the floor from back here, there isn't really too much stopping us. There's a 200-day uh, above 1,130, but really I think we could carry right up above 1,150 up into these previous highs. And that would just kind of that would just kind of keep us in a sort of pretty range-bound environment, where there was a fail. I mean, that's, that was my note here: is that there was a fail break of this low, essentially, didn't really move anywhere after that break of that low, and so it kind of makes sense that we just push right back up to 1,200 almost in a basically a range trading environment. That's kind of what it's looking like at the moment. So I've not seen any specific questions, so I think we're going to call it a day there. Thank you very much for attending, and good luck with trading this week. Jasper Lawler signing out. Mm -hmm.